Hi, my name is Annabelle Maria Galang, and I'm the founder and president of the Seminist Movement. I'm here today with Dr. Robert Weinberg. Fine. So I'll go ahead and ask the first one. Of course, whatever you want. All right, thank you. So what have you accomplished in your field? Well, uh, the work in my lab has been reasonably influential in um, directing uh, cancer research over the last three and a half, four decades, mm -hmm. in that we found uh, genes that are critical to the conversion of normal cells into cancer cells. As you may know, when cancer develops, a cell that had a normal complement of genes, a normal group of genes, now begins to suffer genetic damage and begins to accumulate damaged or altered genes, mutant genes. And these damaged genes, once they are formed, then start to stimulate the growth of the cells around them, leading in turn to uncontrolled cell proliferation and the accumulation of large masses of cells, which one calls a tumor. And uh, ultimately, one has to trace these aberrant behaviors to uh, the damaged genes inside cancer cells, which others and my own group have done with increasing precision since the early days of this field, starting almost exactly 40 years ago. Uh, and so uh, we found a, an oncogene induced by a chemical carcinogen already in 1979. We isolated a tumor suppressor gene, which acts in an opposite way to restrain or control cell proliferation seven years later. Uh, and we began to understand how these different mutant genes, once they are mutated inside a cancer cell, collaborate one with the other to create the fully cancerous behavior of the cell in which these mutant genes are residing. Our research has focused increasingly over the last decade on what enables a cancer cell in a primary tumor to spread to distant sites in the body, the process of metastasis. And we now understand with some precision how that happens in many kinds of human cancers. But what we still don't understand is once a cancer cell from one primary site in the body spreads to a distant tissue, how does that cell figured out, figure out how to make a living in a distant tissue, an unfamiliar tissue, a potentially inhospitable tissue. So that's our major uh, research question right now. Thank you. Next question is, what hopes do you have for other scientists to pick up where you left off? What do you hope becomes of what you've done in the future? Well, researchers like myself Half of our task is to develop new discoveries in the area of, for example, cancer research, and the other half is to train new generations of scientists. So over the last four decades, maybe 100, 120 different young people have passed through my lab and received some exposure into how one actually conducts cancer research. At the same time, I've taught classes at MIT where I'm a faculty member. And these instructive experiences, in fact, I trust, have helped to persuade some young people that it's very important to be uh, able to uh, study cancer from various aspects, cell biology, biochemistry, molecular biology, genetics, and so forth, so that one begins to develop a full picture of what goes wrong inside cells when they become cancerous. Thank you. Why do you think it's important to have more women in STEM fields? Well, it's important to have women in many fields. The fact of the matter is women are about 51%, 52% of the population. Um, women have the same brain power as men. And therefore, uh, it's an enormous waste of good uh, brain power and talent if we don't engage large numbers of women to be involved in STEM fields, including basic biomedical research. In this country, we have a dearth of people. We have a lack of people who are interested in studying certain kinds of STEM disciplines. And that really requires more people becoming interested in science, in mathematics, engineering. And to the extent that we're unable to attract and recruit young women into these fields, that's a major shortfall in our talent pool which we cannot afford to overlook. We need young women in the same way we need young men. And to the extent that young women are underrepresented in these STEM disciplines, that's a tragedy for this country. Okay, thank you.
Lastly, what advice do you have for the young girls who are part of the feminist movement? I think one problem that young women have in STEM disciplines is a lack of self-confidence. And the fact of the matter is that uh, young women need to realize they're as good as anyone else, i.e. they're as good as their male contemporaries. And they need to stand up straight and proud and move ahead. It's not often considered to be feminine, to be ambitious, but young women need to become ambitious and they need to have some resolve to move through the areas of uh, STEM education, some of which are actually quite rigorous and, and, and draining. And so this will require a new resolve on the part of young women uh, who need to espouse the uh, old saying, you can do it, girl. They need to believe in that and they need to begin to study these disciplines because they're so much in demand. I am Robert Weinberg and I am a STEMinist.